ready because this is going to be one very exciting video. And that's because I've been using my Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus for the past two plus months now and I'm simply in love with this device more so than with any other smartphone that I've used. The Galaxy S10 Plus is now sitting in my right pocket, which not a lot of devices get to do, so it's actually replaced my iPhone XS Max as my main device for the past two months. And yeah, here's my full in-depth review of the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. So yeah, get those snacks ready, get that popcorn, those drinks, and everything you need, because this is going to be one long but very detailed and uh, interesting video with all my final thoughts on Samsung's flagship for early 2019. Okay, so Samsung as a company wasn't doing that well in the smartphone industry before the iPhone got released. So Nokia was dominating the market, LG was doing really well, but Samsung, not so much. However, after the iPhone got released in 2007 and pretty much killed Nokia's entire business, Samsung decided to try and compete with Apple's iPhone. So they released the original Samsung Galaxy back in 2009 and then the Galaxy S1 in 2010. The S1 did feature a capacitive touchscreen, which was also an OLED display, so it was the best mobile display on the market, both in terms of tech and in terms of screen resolution, but it had a plastic build, Android was extremely laggy at that time, it was horrible, um, so the user experience wasn't great at all. And the story was very similar for the next generation of Galaxy devices. The S2, the S3, the S4, and especially the S5 were all extremely cheaply manufactured compared to the iPhones, which had a full metal and glass design. Samsung phones had an infamous plastic frame, uh, which aimed to look like metal, but <laughs> yeah, it definitely didn't. And it also chipped up very, very easily. So yeah, it looked, it looked really, really cheap. They also lagged extremely bad. And that's when TouchWiz, Samsung's UI overlay, started becoming a meme in the tech industry uh, of just how bad the user experience was. But after the Galaxy S6, everything changed. You see, Samsung started making their phones from glass and metal, just like Apple, and they've started focusing more and more on their design. They've also ironed out most of their software issues, and the Galaxy S10, 9 years, not 10 by the way, after the introduction of the first Galaxy S, is a completely different story. So let's start out with section number one, the design. The design of this phone is absolutely outstanding. So this, in my eyes at least, is the best looking phone on the market by, by far. We get some extremely thin bezels on this phone, the top frame is barely even there, and the earpiece is now built into that frame. And while this does impact usability, which I'll cover in the software section of this video, uh, it makes the phone look absolutely stunning when you look at it. There's no notch at all on the S10, there is the single cutout for the front camera, which Samsung has managed to have in the actual display panel itself. So this is really impressive to see how the display wraps around the camera cutout and that portion of the display by the way does support touch input so you're not really missing out on anything here. And with this year's S10 we actually get three models to choose from rather than just the usual Galaxy S and the Galaxy S Plus like we had before. The S10 Plus does come with a dual camera cutout on the front for better 3D depth mapping while the regular S10 and also the lower end S10e they only come with a single camera cutout. The S10e also has a flat display rather than the curved one uh, that the S10 and the S10 Plus have, so overall in terms of the looks, the regular S10 definitely looks the best, since you have a smaller camera cutout on the front. Yes, the display is smaller at 6.1 versus 6.4 inches on the S10 Plus, or 5.8 inches by the way on the S10e, but it does look more stunning since you have an even more bezel-less display. And the backs of these phones also look amazing as well, so uh, you can get the S10s in many colors, some of them are unfortunately exclusive to only a few countries, uh, but the Prism Black S10 which I got for myself and the Prism White one are pretty much available everywhere and then you have variants such as the Prism Green one like a regular S10 which Vodafone UK provided for us to show in this video so yeah shout out to Vodafone uh, for that. But my favorite part about the S10's design is actually that camera cutout itself. You see many users have actually started making wallpapers that embrace the cutout rather than hiding it and wow take a look at some of these. So the Wally wallpaper just looks incredible and there's many of them that the community made. You can find a lot of them on Reddit, by the way, and even Samsung made a few themselves to fully take advantage of that camera cutout. I honestly think that this is one of the best things to ever happen to a smartphone in a while. Apple tries to hide the notch on their iPhones, whereas Samsung's doing quite the opposite. They're fully, fully embracing it. And really, the only, the only small complaint that I have regarding the S10's design is 
the chin. Not a fact that it's big because it's almost the same size as on the iPhone XS Max, so it's the second thinnest chin on the market right now, uh, but the fact that it's not the same size as the top bezel, so it will stand out quite easily. Other than that, in my opinion, this is the most beautiful phone on the market and just a joy to look at. And speaking of looking at the S10, Wow, that display guys, that display is just insane. This is by far the best display on any smartphone on the market right now. I personally like my displays vibrant, so that's the mode that I use. I want my colors to pop, probably because I'm colorblind, joking, not really. But on a more serious note, the display is just outstanding. So it's a 6.4 inch 3040 by 1440 OLED display with an aspect ratio of 19 by 9 and a pixel density of 522. It's got Gorilla Glass 6 and honestly I don't have any scratches on mine, almost, so it's looking pretty good, whereas my iPhone XS Max is all, all scratched up. And probably the best part about this display is that it can display HDR10 plus content. And this is when the display can go as bright as a thousand nits, which is just insane on a smartphone. Also, if you're coming from an iPhone, Android does support Google's VP9 codec, obviously. Uh, and in English, this means that you can watch 1440p videos on YouTube rather than being restricted to just 1080p videos like on all the Apple products. So not only is the display higher res, but YouTube also renders at a higher quality as well. And it's just an incredible experience to watch content on. And you know what? This is by far the most outstanding display I've ever seen not just on a smartphone, but on any device in general. It's one of those things that you have to see in person to fully comprehend how good it really is. So, so far it's been all flowers and ponies in terms of the S10, so let's move on to the camera because here's where some of the downsides of this phone start. While we do get a third camera module on the back, which is a wide-angle module, so you can capture significantly more in the shots uh, that you can with the regular module, the image quality itself hasn't really changed that much from the Note 9 or even the Samsung Galaxy S9 from a year before. In fact, looking at the camera specs, uh, the S10 and the S9 seem to be using the exact same modules. Now, Samsung has updated their image processing, so the HDR shots especially do look much better than on the S9, uh, but they're still not better than on the Pixel 3 XL or the iPhone XS Max in a lot of cases. Now, on the video side, we did get a massive upgrade and that is the fact that you can now record for an unlimited amount of time, which might sound weird to some of you, because, you know, pretty much every single smartphone on the market right now allows you to record for an unlimited amount of time. Well, not with Samsung phones, because before, you were actually limited to just 5 minutes of 4K60 video recording or 10 minutes of 4K30. This was incredibly stupid, considering that Samsung promotes a ton of storage on these phones. I mean, on the S10 you can have up to 1.5 terabytes of storage and you know you had that limit that five minute limit uh, of video recording before which was insane but i'm glad to see that the restriction has finally been removed arguing that slow motion is really good but that's only if you only care about the results so the s10 can shoot in up to 960 frames per second in 720p uh, but the slow motion movement detection is done automatically, so manual mode is glitched by the way. And long story short, recording this quick balloon pop scene took about 5-6 to six attempts on the S10 versus the iPhone XS Max and the Google Pixel 3 XL which nailed it uh, the first time. So yeah, it's very frustrating recording slow motion on the S10. Uh, but when it does work, the result is really good. And then there's a few weird camera bugs or, I don't know, some weird decisions on Samsung's part, such as the fact that you cannot use the wide-angle lens or even the telephoto lens when recording video. That's unless you switch to 4K 30, so 4K 60 doesn't work with a wide-angle or the telephoto. Why? I have no idea. Optical stabilization is missing from the wide-angle lens, but the telephoto lens does have it, so it doesn't make any sense at all for Samsung to limit this. Raw image processing, same thing. You can only take raw photos when using the main lens and not a telephoto or the wide-angle. I really want to take raw photos with a wide-angle lens, so why, why isn't that possible? Speaking of raw, uh, the raw image processing is good, uh, but it's nothing compared to the iPhone XS Max's, which has the best dynamic range on any smartphone today. Now, don't get the wrong idea, I'm not saying that this camera is bad. On the contrary, the S10 has the best smartphone camera on the market, same spot as the Google Pixel 3, the iPhone XS Max, and the Huawei P30 Pro. But they all have different ups and downs. For example, the iPhone XS Max excels in video and dynamic range when it comes to photos, uh, the Pixel 3 has some amazingly good HDR shots, and an insane night mode, uh, the Huawei P30 Pro has that 5x or even 50 times zoom, an even better night mode than the Pixel 3, and then the S10 Plus has the best wide-angle camera on any smartphone today, the best front-facing camera for video since it can actually do 4K video on the front, which is insane, uh, and it can also take some outside 
outstanding shots with, with little to no tweaking required. Feel free to watch our blind camera test if you want to see objectively which smartphone camera is your favorite and which one is good for you know your uh, your scenario. And we've also done some very detailed ultimate camera comparisons between the SN and very different smartphones. So check those out here if you want to see a more detailed look at everything that the camera on the S10 Plus can do. In the end, there's no perfect smartphone camera, uh, but the Galaxy S10 Plus is, is definitely as good as the competition, just in some other areas. And performance-wise, the S10 Plus is simply a beast. It comes with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 in the US and Canada, and Samsung's own Exynos 9820 in Europe and Asia. And this year, it seems like the Snapdragon models are actually a better choice. So they're not only faster, but they also offer a better battery life by quite a significant margin. So check out PhoneBuff's uh, detailed speed test and battery drain test. They're honestly the best ones on the market on YouTube and everywhere else. Check them out. Um, and you, you can get a really good idea of how much better the Snapdragon variant really is when compared to Samsung's own Exynos model. Quite, quite strange, but yeah. Now, since we're UK based, we got the Exynos model. And personally, my experience with the S10's performance has been really, really good. Unlike the old Samsung phones that lagged severely, I haven't really had any major lag or any freezes on my S10. In fact, my iPhone XS Max completely froze three times during the past two weeks alone. And a lot of apps actually do freeze. Like, you know, the settings, a lot of times it freezes and I cannot interact with it. I can close it, but then when I open it again, it's still frozen. So yeah, I've had it happen on the iPhone XS Max, uh, where I had to force restart the iPhone in order for it to work again. I've never had this with the S10. And the fact that it comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM by default and even 12 gigabytes on the higher end one terabyte of storage model means that you'll never have an issue keeping apps open in the background. Yes, it's not as powerful as an iPhone XS Max is, but it can easily handle all the everyday tasks extremely well. So I'm very, very pleased in this regard. Heck, it even has a vapor cooling pipe to keep the temperatures low during gaming or even video editing, uh, which both the regular S10 and the S10e lack. But I mean, performance is nothing without a good software experience. So I'm very pleased to say that the S10 has the best software experience I've seen in a Samsung phone by a long margin and one of the best software experience I've seen in an Android phone today. Samsung's new One UI is a huge improvement over the previous Samsung Experience UI. So not only do you get this really cool system-wide dark theme, uh, but the whole idea behind Samsung's One UI is that you can use it with one hand. So you can swipe down from the home screen to access the notification panel, and even the brightness slider all with just one finger. And everything is also based on gestures now, so you can swipe up in the middle to go home, uh, you can swipe up on the right-hand side to go back, and you can swipe up on the left-hand side to open up the multitasking panel. Not the best gestures out there, definitely better than on the Pixel, but there's still slide up gestures of the previous buttons rather than something entirely new and designed specifically with the lack of buttons in mind. So, you know, like the swipe left and swipe right gestures that we have on the iPhone. However, the fact that you can have folders on the app drawer is just brilliant. So you can basically have the entire iOS app UI with a swipe up of a finger, and then you can keep the home screen clean and simple with just a few icons and a few essential widgets. I also love Samsung's Edge panel uh, that gives you a few extra apps when you swipe from the side of the phone, the curved edge. It's brilliant and extremely useful to have. And you can even have tools here. You can have contacts and way more things than just than just apps. So what do I don't like about the software experience? Well, my main issue here is with accidental touch rejection. It's, it's pretty bad. So because of the, uh, the curved display, it's actually very easy for your palm to touch some of the icons on the edge. Now, this was improved from the S9 to the Note 9 when Samsung made the edges less curved on the Note 9 and the accidental touches were almost fixed entirely. Uh, but the edges are now back to being really curved on the S10, which does make the phone look nice, but it also severely impacts the usability. So I ended up randomly liking comments or tweets, uh, pausing YouTube videos, skipping videos. Yeah, this happened to me quite a number of times. And then I also dislike the scrolling. So there's no bounce effect like we have on iOS. So everything feels very unnatural because it stops instantly and nothing feels as smooth or as fluid as an iPhone does. And the thing is, this doesn't apply to all Android phones, to be honest. So for example, my Pixel handles a slight gesture much better than my S10 Plus does, which constantly struggles with this, mostly because of the curved display, so this is really, really annoying. Animations don't feel as smooth as iOS either. Everything feels a bit choppy and unnatural. So yeah, if you're coming from iOS, this is something that you'll notice right, right away. And of course, there's the updates. So Samsung is usually about a year late when it comes to updates, and even when they do release an update, such as the recent night mode for the camera, not all the S10s get it uh, at the same time. 
So for example, my personal NS10 doesn't have it yet. This is my personal NS10. Uh, the review unit, the white one, does have it. Now, Samsung did improve their update cycle and they've actually launched One UI on the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, the S9, the Note 8, and even the S8. So I'm very, very happy for that. Uh, but it's still far behind when compared to Google Pixel phones, which obviously get day one updates, or even OnePlus phones, which also get updated just a few weeks or just a few months after Google phones. Moving on to the special features, wow. So this phone, this phone is the Swiss army knife of smartphones. It's got pretty much everything and so much more you could ever want and need in a phone. It's one of the few smartphones to still support a microSD card slot, so you can expand the top of the line one terabyte model with up to 512 gigabytes of even more storage and have 1.5 terabytes of storage in a smartphone, which is just insane. Unbelievable seeing this today in a phone that you can put in your pocket. Now, unfortunately, there is no UFS 3.0 storage, only the Galaxy Fold and the OnePlus 7 Pro have that. And it's a bit disappointing considering that, you know, Samsung actually manufactures those chips. So Samsung's not using their highest end chips in their own phones and they're selling that to uh, those two different manufacturers and those are using those chips. UFS 3.0 would have given the S10 read speeds of close to three gigabytes per second, up from about 1.5 gigabytes. So it's not too bad at the moment it's pretty good uh, and the write speeds are almost double as well on UFS 3.0 so it's a shame that we don't have that but still it's a really really fast phone so realistically you don't really need it but you know would have been cool to have it and then we also get a ton more features so we get an always on display which is fully customizable we also get a notification ring led which goes around the camera cutout um, by the way samsung has recently added this in an update we get ip68 water resistance which same as on every other smartphone that's water resistant it's not covered under warranty. So water damage is not covered under warranty. So yeah, you shouldn't risk it. Uh, and we also get dual serial speakers, which are much louder than even on something like an iPhone XS Max. <laughs> We also get a headphone jack, which is really useful to have if you're not fully invested into the wireless headphone ecosystem. But if you are, Samsung has also released the Galaxy Buds, which are their answer to Apple's second generation AirPods. They isolate the sound much better than the AirPods. They sound okay, not as full as the AirPods, but really close. The microphone is pretty bad, by the way, uh, but they do offer better controls than the AirPods. And probably the best part about them is that you can actually charge them on the back of your S10. Yes, the S10 now has reverse wireless charging, so you can charge any anything that supports wireless charging from the back of the S10. Your Galaxy Watch, your Galaxy Buds, or even, yes, an iPhone for that matter. And then wireless charging is now even faster on the S10 with up to 12 watts of charging. So yeah, that's, that's great. And fast charging is also really good on this phone. So it can get up to 33% in about 30 minutes of charge, which is really good considering the massive 4100 mAh battery. But there are two outstanding features on this phone uh, that not a lot of reviewers or even people talk about, and these are by far the most impressive features on any smartphone on the market. The first one is called DeX. So with the S10, you can use the USB Type-C port, which is also USB 3.1, by the way, not 2.0 like we have on the iPhones, uh, and you can connect it to an external monitor. And once you do that, it boots into uh, this DeX mode, uh, which looks very similar to a Windows 10 experience. So you have all of your apps here in full screen, and apps such as Microsoft Office and Chrome, they actually work uh, just as they do on your full desktop computer. They look the same and they work the same. And yes, you can even attach a wireless mouse and a wireless keyboard and basically transform your S10 into a desktop computer whenever you get back from, from work. And this is absolutely amazing. If you're the kind of person that mostly uses their smartphone and nothing else, you know, being able to use this as a full desktop PC when, uh, when you're home or even at work is not just so, so convenient, but it's also far more affordable than having to buy a completely new computer. And then the second big unique feature is VR. So Samsung has the best mobile VR on the market right now, the Gear VR, uh, which also comes with a motion controller. And this is something that I recommend to every single Samsung user, actually, not just S10, it works with the S9 S8 uh, to get. It's so, so awesome. The Gear VR is actually made in partnership with Oculus, so you have full access to thousands of Oculus apps and games, and with the S10's gorgeous 3K OLED display, everything looks just stunning. 
Link in the description for the VR, by the way. Uh, it's something that honestly all of you need to try out. It's, it's that big of a game changer. And finally, we aren't talking about special features without mentioning the fingerprint reader. So on previous Samsung phones, ever since the S8, we've had it on the back, which I was never a fan of. It was difficult to reach, especially on the S8, and it just wasn't that great. So the one on the Note 9 was good and much easier to reach because it was now placed in the middle rather than on the side, but I still prefer using something like a facial recognition system that Apple uses on the iPhones uh, or, you know, a fingerprint reader on the front. And this is exactly what Samsung has done with the S10. So we've seen this rumored and leaked ever since the S8, Samsung using an in-display fingerprint reader, uh, an optical one, but for whatever reason they never did. And even the S10 now uses an ultrasonic fingerprint reader, which is actually far more advanced than an optical one, since it doesn't need any light in order for it to work. And my experience with this fingerprint reader has been okay. So it's, it's definitely slower than a dedicated fingerprint reader, and it doesn't work as often as Face ID does on the iPhones. Initially, it was working just 6 out of 10 times for me, so I added my finger multiple times, and now it works 8 or 9 out of 10 times. So pretty good. So there you go. Tip for those of you who have trouble with the fingerprint reader. But for me, I would always pick the S10's fingerprint reader over phones that have it on the back. I still prefer Face ID though, it works when your finger is wet and it's far more reliable, uh, but this is Samsung's first generation in-display fingerprint reader, made by Qualcomm by the way, uh, and I'm pretty confident that it's going to get even better with future software updates and eventually, you know, new Samsung Galaxy phones as well. And the S10 is also one of the world's first smartphones to feature Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 802.11ax, uh, the brand new standard that can get theoretical speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second. So there's very few Wi-Fi 6 routers and networks out there, uh, but this is still a great Great thing to have for future proofing. And speaking of future proofing, if you want 5G, Samsung will be selling the 5G variant of the S10, which not only comes with, you know, 5G, uh, but also a larger 6.7 inch display as well as a fourth extra camera module. And the battery life has been amazing for me as well, so it can easily last me for a full day of use, even when I'm traveling and I'm a really heavy user. So yeah, the S10 also has this adaptive power saving mode, by the way, which limits background usage of certain apps based on what and how you use your apps and when you use them. And you can also manually toggle this ultra power saving mode, it's not called like that anymore, but it still works in a similar way where the UI is black entirely and you have this simplified UI where you can only use a few essential apps, but the battery can last you for a few days or even weeks uh, by doing this. And of course that with fast wireless charging and fast wire charging, that 4100 mAh battery charges up really really fast and overall this phone has given me the best battery life so far on any phone that I've used so it's really really good. Okay so in the end what's my conclusion on the S10 Plus? Well honestly this is this is it this is the best smartphone on the market right now overall this is the full package. And keep in mind that this is coming from someone who uses mostly Apple products. The S10 Plus is an amazing device with a stunning display, outstanding battery life, a very versatile camera, and even the price of it is actually really good. On Samsung's website, the S10 Plus starts from 900 pounds in the UK. This is for the baseline 128 gigabytes model. Uh, it also comes with eight gigabytes of RAM, which is overall 200 pounds less than an iPhone XS Max, which only comes with 64 gigabytes of storage, no microSD card, and a fraction of the features that the S10 Plus comes with. Check out the Amazon links in the description for a lower and also a more up-to-date price. And yes, the iPhone does offer a more fluid and optimized experience, everything just flows more nicely, and if you're heavily invested into the Apple ecosystem, then yes, get an iPhone, this is a much better choice. Uh, but since I recently got an iPad Pro, by the way, I still have iOS for some things, so I can use an S10, an iPad, and a MacBook. Yes, this is actually doable for me. Also, since you cannot even use two apps at the same time, on an 1100 pound iPhone XS Max, for example, which you can easily do on the S10, yes, the S10 is also a much better productivity tool that fits right in your pocket. But yeah, there you go, my full review with my final thoughts on the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus after more than two months of use. So yeah, thank you for watching. If you end up buying anything, please do use the link in the description. Uh, we get a small commission from Amazon on those sales and it helps the production of really difficult and long and production heavy videos such as this one. I really wanted to cover everything in this one. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you managed to make it until the end. And also let me know what do you guys think overall of the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. But yeah, this has been pretty much everything. This is subscribe and notifications, tap that bell icon if you want to see more in-depth tech videos like this one. Um, hopefully it was. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in the next in-depth tech video, which should be, well, pretty soon. Thank you for watching. Ton of Tech signing out. Cheers.